Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and in this short video we are going to introduce a new project to you which is going to have a few stages. He has already had two stages, right? This was the second time. Yeah, right. it was the second time. Some of you might have seen the pictures on our Facebook page and um, not that I was so surprised but still seeing the amount of reactions and traffic we have received sharing the pictures of this build was quite something. I think this car has created the second highest traffic we've ever had on social media. Um, so I don't know, we might have done something right. It looks good or something. So this is a very, very limited edition Ford Focus, the SD500. How many are there around now? And it is getting less and less, so you have to look after this baby. So originally, okay, maybe I should mention to people that this car is owned by our beautiful Tony. And people will know who you are when I say that you had the Ford Orion. And some people already know it. So he had the Ford Orion with that crazy build. And we had two videos of that yeah. Yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. And then when you found this car, you just you just wanted this yeah. and the Orion had to go. Yeah. Sim simple as that. Even if you had all that work in the, the Orion. So most of the equipment came out, came out of that car. So it's not a surprise why now we have so many stag amps here because he had all these in the Orion before and even that lithium battery. So I'm gonna go through what's happening here. Maybe I should point out first that that's not the permanent sub. We just threw that in because we don't have a proper sub yet. And this was the first time that the car got powered on. And as there's, there wasn't any sub in the car yet, we just threw this little Helix K10.2 or something like that. It's a dual voice call, prefab box, ported, small slot there, tiny thing. At least it's better than nothing. And then the next chapter will be when this car is going to come back uh, for a proper subwoofer enclosure bigger than trim panels and everything to make this boot somewhat finished. All right, so we have many amps, right? So we have the Helix DSP Pro processing the signal from different sources. Up front, we have an Android head unit, um, which is good for CarPlay and easy daily use. And we also have a Bluetooth module fitted in the DSP. You can see the antenna of the Bluetooth hanging out there. So that can also be used for streaming. And should you want anything else in the future, if you wanted the wired coax, we have option for that too. But then this takes uh, looks after the looks after the processing. So we run everything fully active in the car. Um, we have a three-way front end. I'm going to show that when I go to the cabin to the front. Uh, we run the tweeters and the mids from this four-channel amplifier. Then we run the mid bass from this four-channel amplifier, and we have two channels left which may be used for a front sub in the future. And then we have this four channel amplifier for rear feel. So the rear feel will be two way, but the active processing will happen with the built-in crossovers on the amplifier. Um, and we still have to decide what we do with the rear feel, whether we keep it in the cabin or somewhere here at the back in the boot. Because in the Orion, when we shared the last video, we had that crazy boot, yeah. boot the tailgate. Trunk. Trunk. Yep. And that was fun, especially for car shows and car meetings where Tony goes to. It's, it's nice to open the car and play music to the masses as well, especially when it sounds nice. Everyone can appreciate that. We are not off the SPL level crazy screaming madness. But if the rear field could be utilized for inside and outside listening, that would be great. We can always set it up differently, save them on different presets and then, you know, whatever you know, scenario you have, you can just click on the controller up front and then it will sound completely different. So that's what the fortune amplifiers are running now. And then we have two monoblocks. Not that we need two monoblocks because they are 500 watts on 4 ohm and 1K on 1 ohm. Whose phone is that? It's yours. Yeah. It's in the car. Yeah. So even one would be enough for the system to run a subwoofer. But because we had two in the Orion, we thought, well, why wouldn't we have two? And then we can build a nice and symmetrical layout as well. 
So we have two mono blocks for a single 12 inch sub, which is dual voice call, 2x2 two two ohm. So we will have 2 kilowatt for a 12 inch sub, which is a bit evil, but we want a problem with clean power, that's for sure. And we can run a lot of clean power because he had this lithium battery in the Orion, which comes with a DC DC, DC DC charger as well, which was needed in the Orion because that was an old car with a small alternator. So the owner didn't want a high load on the alternator. You could literally burn the alternator down if you had a flattened lithium battery because that would just suck all the power in and it would put such a high load on a small alternator like you used yeah. to have in the Orion that that would have died yeah um, in this car probably wouldn't be an issue but because we had the DC DC charger we put it in it supplies 30 amp for the lithium battery but to be fair with that you, we can play music for so long 100 amp hour lithium is is enough for the whole day without the engine and when you drive pff, easy easy life now in the boot it looks enormous and for a build like this yeah, it's massive. But um, once you had it, we had to use it and we couldn't really put it anywhere else. We only selected that orientation because this way we leave, leave more space there for a sub box. Because if it was flat down, then it would take more space away. It would come in probably around here and then we would have less space for the sub box. Once we have a trim panel, it will be covered and completely hidden. So this rack, was bought it down at many many points uh, i might be able to find pictures for for that uh, if i can insert it then i do insert it here if not then you can see the build pictures at the very end but yeah this rack is bought it down to the floor at many points into rivnuts nuts with machine stainless bolts same way the amplifiers are using stainless bolts everywhere this car is built to a standard everything is fused that second battery is fused right there within 40 centimeter then it comes into the distro, then every single power run is fused with the correct fuse size for the limitation of the cable size. Yeah, we have we have a lot happening. Five amps with four gauge, and then we have three lines, one for the head unit, one for the DSP and one for the director up front, because we have the director with the Helix DSP Pro. So this way everything is fused. So that's what's happening at the back, hopefully. It's clear for everyone. Yeah, it, it, it was it was quite a long time to get that wiring done. All that madness with TechFlex and all those heat shrinks, nice and you know equal length. Um, the RCAs will be swapped out. Some people might might have spotted already, or from the pictures for sure that the RCAs are not the same. Is because we were using some cables from the Orion, some cables from the shelf. We had limited time to do this. But next time it comes back, all the cables will be the same. Now we just wanted to make the system turn on and play, tune it and figure out what's happening with the rest of the system. Because the last time when we had a week, we had to do the back, all that wiring and amp rack. And then we had to do the front end where we installed uh, stag six and a half inch mid-base drivers in the doors. The door was, you know, standard, deadened in and outside door card was dead and, and, and we had absorber applied on it too so we did what we could and it's just like most door builds it, it's okay it's not excellent but um, of course I always look at the builds with a different reference level many people know that I hate doors this is not any different I can't I can't praise this door not many um, we have rails but then of course you have to play the system quite loud for that um, but we had no other option because originally we thought that we would be able to have mid base in the kicks because yeah there is space but the steel structure behind these trim panels are just weird and um, when we got around installing the mid base we figured out that it's a no no go or it would be so difficult to do do it and so labor intensive that the customer just wouldn't justify spending that crazy money from that money that it would take to install the mid-base in this car, we did everything the last time in a week. We installed mid-base, the pillars, custom pillars, as well as the whole amprac at the back, and, and we made a functional system. So that's the point when, when I always talk about how much a good system costs, and we have a video of that I shared probably one or two years ago. Yeah, custom installation is, is the biggest enemy because it takes time. 
And yes, we wanted mids on the dash as well, because there's a huge flat area there. But we started to pull the dash out and we realized that uh, there's no space underneath. Absolutely no space. Because the firewall comes in right under, under that. There's only like a finger space underneath the trim and the firewall because it comes further into the cabin and then it falls down the firewall doesn't start at the edge of the windscreen so yes we could have mid-range on the top of the dash built above it but then it wouldn't blend in and it wouldn't look right and it wouldn't even take the boxes for the emma uh, visibility test so we had to go with a solution where we have the mid-range and the tweeter on the pillar and yes we had a few comments people saying why we selected such a weird aiming for the mid-range, why it's so off-axis, well, main reason is the 4 centimeter rule in Emma, because most parts of the world don't have this problem, um, but if someone wants to have a bit of fun, take part in the competition, and if you want to tick the boxes, then you have to comply to the rules, and we have literally 40 mil, hang on, from the edge of the windscreen where, where you have those dots, if you can see that, we have 40 mil coming in, which was taped up, so from listening position, they look at it, and if it blocks that 40 mil, three points on each speaker. So with this, we are within that, and that was the only way to get the mid-range in. There's a 3-inch Stag MS-30 mid-range there, with the tweeter of that mid-base, because that was a two-way set, so we just added the MS-30s. And then we put the tweeters more on axis because we wanted nice detail out of them we wanted all the top end extension yes yeah, some people would have put them also off axis and i know many people can tune good great sounding cars like that i, I mean you know i'm probably not good at, good at that so i just i just want optimal aiming for the tweeter to get that detail out of it and it certainly does it it sounds beautiful so that's the story behind the pillar aiming and um, yeah, those pillars took time, but we decided to go with speaker cloths so we can hide them and then this way it blends in better, it looks more OEM, it's not as shouty. I don't know, these days that's, that's my style, I prefer it that way. I always say that everything for the eyes, well, no, I'm saying it wrong, everything for the ears, right? Everything for the ears, nothing for the eyes. So up front, that's where we have the Android head unit. We will have a permanent mounting for the director. Currently, it's just sitting there with double-sided tape, but that will be permanently built in there. That will be another time. And the owner also 3D printed a phone holder here. So this way he can have the phone connected straight to that Pioneer head unit. So as it stands right now, this system is going to be something that many people can achieve you know it's not crazy kick builds and cutting up the car or cutting up the dash even if we planned that and you were happy with that plan to be fair yeah. um because you said you would keep this car for long it's a keeper then you wouldn't mind to let us do whatever we do and you know what we can do when we when we are allowed to do crazy stuff but we were hoping for something like we did in the clio and in the suzuki where it was easy. It was easy to get the mid-base in the kicks. It was easy to do the dash build. So when it when it came to building time and labor time and the cost, it looked really viable, even from the budget we had. But then once we started to pull the dash and everything out and all the trims, that's when we realized that, uh, no. That was when, when a Monday was completely lost. And not wasted. It's part of a custom project, to be fair. Because we got to lunchtime and that's when we had to call Tony and deliver the bad news that mm, okay we have to make a new plan but at least in that way later on you realize that it was good that we didn't cut this car two bits yeah. yeah and still it sounds great it still sounds great yes maybe in the future if you want to do something mad and if you find spare door cards we could swap that insert to be fair I could swap it for you because that's not standard that's only that that vinyl trim or leather trim is only for the st500 and ideally we don't want to cut these door cards but if we had spares then it's a beautifully long door we could definitely take the bottom of the door card off 
and then build custom enclosures for the mid base over there that would give a better solution just like i did in my honda as well and in few cars so yeah that's that's something for the future this is a long-term project but for now we just want to make it fully functional and enjoyable so now the system was tuned we know what the speaker locations are doing what the cabin is doing what's with us and what's against us and then um yeah next next time when probably we'll have an update of this project you will see some progress in the in the boot area where we will build a sub box and make a move on the trim panels or who knows if we have enough time we push it as as far as we can and we may have a fully finished boot build um what i have to mention i have to mention it in every video because many people don't know that we have our patreon channel where for example the rt evaluation of this car will be shared as well we share many rt evaluations over there so you can see what works in a car then you can also learn from that you know what to expect from a car not from the speakers because the speakers to be fair they measure very similar in the same location and similar aiming um, what speakers sound like in terms of tonality and control and timber and things like that that's a different story an rta is not going to show that but when we measure the car we do a proper rta session on it then we learn what what's working in the cabin or what's not and actually we learned a lot today we know how to approach like good sub base in this car from now on because it's a bit more complex than just throwing a subwoofer at the back it will be a bit more complex in this car sadly but uh you can you can see that rt evaluation on on patreon there's a link to it in the description you can click on that you can check the channel out sub for a month try it you will see there's so much content there um weekly topics daily updates there's a lot a lot of stuff so it's worth checking out other than that i'm gonna leave this video here you can check out our social media sites then you can also see pictures no we are, i'm gonna put all the pictures to the end of this video then people can see what went into it because we spent a week when we had the first chapter of this project we spent a week a few months ago just soundproofing it everything was gutted out everything was done but you will see that from the pictures and then all the all the steps of the installation to this stage so I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully you liked it. Feel free to share it, comment, all the usual things. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care.